I'm blown away right now. I've never been this close to this many bees oh, yeah. before, yeah, and then to go. see them Get doing. Gentle. Gomes with Gomes Selling Homes. I'm here with Brad Simmons of Smith Mills Apiary and welcome back to another local web series. So today I'm chatting with Brad about everything that he's doing for the bees as a professional beekeeper and everything else that, that entails. So thank you for meeting with me Brad. Thank you for having me. How did you get started in this? It happened about 15 years ago. Uh, here on this property in Dartmouth I had a large vegetable garden and a couple of hundred with a hedgerow of raspberries and strawberries. So I wanted to bring in some pollinators to enhance the pollination of this. And that's what I did. Excellent. He gave me a quick tour before and we'll make sure to go around again just for you to take a peek at it. And we will be taking an inside look at the beehives as well. So what is the reason behind starting this for you? So the reason behind starting the corporation was for the last 15 years, and it was just a love of working with bees. I've been incorporated since uh, last year and now I am able to kind of sell to stores. I still do person to person. I do some lip balm stuff and you know I have some other things that are kind of coming about that we'll talk about in a few minutes. But yeah, that's, that's really how it started and why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. I love it. I love the tour that I just was on with him. And he's also, Brad is also doing a few other things for the community. Would you like to talk about your hero hives? Sure. So um, through my foundation that I do through the One South Coast Chamber, it's called Feed the First Responders. Uh, we've done that for three years. It's been very, very successful. I wanted to incorporate what I call hero hives. Something like this is done for the military personnel. And what we do with Feed the First Responders is we go on location to fire, priests, EMS, hospitals, things like that, and we feed folks for free just to kind of build morale, show them that the community still appreciates them and what they do for all of us. Uh, as a retired 25-year captain from the Sheriff's Office, um, I saw early on that, you know, it's kind of a thankless job. And we wanted to make sure in my retirement that I brought a little awareness to that. My wife and my daughter are registered nurses. My wife is uh, an RN, my daughter is an uh, MP. And so they understand, you know, some of the things that we see um, kind of brings on some PTSD. Through the Hero Hives, I want to be able to talk with folks, not jumping right into issues that they may have, but you know, taking care of a hive brings some serenity to me, and I want to help people to do that as well. Not only through bees, it can just be through a conversation, it doesn't have to be uh, with bees, but because I'm a beekeeper, I think that's a great opportunity to, to be able to do that. I, I really love your willingness and ability to give back to the community and your passion behind specific parts of that. So the Hero Hives, I think, will be uh, welcomed in the community once you really start rolling that out. Um, and you also offer a mentorship to the community. We do. If they do want to be mentored, if they want to learn how to maintain their hives, I also offer that. And then after the first year, year two, they can kind of go on their own. I can still come in if need be and help them. That's a fulfilling thing for people to be able to do that and have the hives. I love it. Uh, folks are really aware that we need our bees. They pollinate like 80% of our food and we need to have them around. So everybody wants to be proactive and take care of the pollinators, but they don't necessarily have the skill set to do that. So I call it a pretty much like a boutique hive opportunity. I like to do two hives when I start somebody out so we have resources to bring over if there's a queen or what have you. Um, and then you're a little bit more successful. But if folks don't want to get involved, I will bring bees from one of my five apiaries here in Dartmouth to their home with wood and wear. There's obviously a fee associated with that. And I will take care of all of their issues. I'll go at least twice a month and 
take care of their beehives. They obviously have to be a pesticide free. You know, they can't be putting all that stuff out there because their bees will die. Do you want to take a tour of your hives as well as your bee shop? Sure. We're getting suited up. I'm pretty excited yes. for this. Yes, we are. So this is how I light mine. Everybody doesn't do this. Sometimes they'll light a fire in the bottom and then add that, but I use pine needles. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the best. And on a day like today, this is a, an absolutely perfect day. It's not overcast, it's not raining. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the forager bees are out. Okay. The forager bees, which are the, the worker bees, a portion of them, they're going out and getting resources. They're getting nectar, they're getting pollen, they're getting tree resin to make propolis. Mm -hmm. And that's what they kind of use to glue the hives. Yeah. And so they're out. They come in, they pass that stuff off to the worker bees, which are younger than them. And they take that from them and they'll pack the pollen into certain areas and things like that. So, but then we'll go into some of these resource hives here mm -hmm. and we will show you a queen and, and all of that. So let's get suited up. Okay. Oh, yes. So you'll see here, Kristen, that uh, there's actually eight hives right here. These okay. are double hives. There's an entrance here, which is the X, and then on the opposite side, you have the O. And you can also see that I have cards made, so it tells me what year this started, what queen I have, the origin, so this is a resource hive, uh, broodminder, we have sensors that go in here in the winters to check for humidity and temperature in the hive. Mm -hmm. And if this is a breeder colony. Okay. So we'll kind of go into this one. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just put a little, little puff of smoke. That's really all you need. These are smaller hives. I just put the second stories on. down and we'll get into a big hive as well I give them just a little little bit of smoke I'll take the hive tool and you see how this is glued down mm -hmm. right you, you got to crack it open so what the bees do is they come in and this is propolis so this is tree resin and they use this for glue this is some of the best stuff on God's green earth this is an antifungal, mm -hmm. antibacterial, uh, antimicrobial. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take, you know, a little chunk off and I'll chew it like bubble gum. Really? Really. And it just, it just worked really well. So typically in your resource hive, the center mm -hmm. here is the center of the hive. So I number my frames for what year I put them in. I like to keep them directional. So when I take them out, they go in the back way. There's nothing on here because I just put these in last week. But okay. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you, we're gonna show you some bees here in the resource hive. We'll see if we can find the queen. I have these queens marked. Uh, so there's no queen there, so we can just take this up right here. And now I brought a frame. This is called a brood frame. And what this is, is eggs, larvae, cap brood. What you're seeing here is you're seeing one of the workers ventilate the hive so that the queen pheromone with their nasonoff gland is coming up. So oh, wow. that's some of the things. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of take a look and we have a lot of emerging stuff right now mm -hmm. um, this is something that the viewers probably aren't going to see too often we have an actual worker bee emerging 
right there from like the I'm, cell. Wow. See it right there? This is amazing. Oh, yes. And now this is their honeycomb. This is, yep. So this is the honey up here. Yeah. Right? You see? Mm -hmm. You see up here? So this is the honey. This is the brood. And so typically what you're going to see on a good frame, and this one, I brought it up. So that a lot of these have already emerged now, mm -hmm. and the queen's not up here laying. But you're going to have all of this solid like this throughout the frame. You're going to have some pollen here, and then you're going to have your honey. Uh, up there as well. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So you see how this oh, one is wow. really full on the back side? Now there there are a bunch of bees flying around us. Oh yeah. But no one's landed yet. No, no. Um the again, smoke really helps. Again, we breed for temperament. Okay. And so the, the smoke, yeah, but we didn't really put a lot in here yeah. to really make a difference. You see how the bees aren't runny. Mm -hmm. Um let me see if I can show you a waggle dance but a waggle dance yeah okay. so you see this big bee right here mm -hmm. that's called a drone that's Which a male one? right there yep that's that's a drone that's a male bee okay yeah so it's okay Hello, little friend. so you see him so they don't have a stinger okay right and you, their eyes you see how big those eyes are those compound eyes up front mm -hmm. so their only function in life is to inseminate the queen when she goes out on a virgin flight and they form what's called a DCA, which is called a, do a drone congregation area. Mm -hmm. And they follow the queen and chase her around and only the fittest bees get to mate with her. So she may go out and she may, may get mated 15 or 20 times in that flight and come back. Mm -hmm. And the sperm that she has from that flight makes her viable some people say up to five years, they can live up to five years, but typically I'll put the bees, um, I'll, I'll change her out after the end of year two. Okay. And so that's kind of what we do there. So we're gonna go into the bottom box. So the other thing gets done. Wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah. And so this is a frame that they just kind of drew out. Yep. Not that too they long. they drew ago. out. Like, yeah. that's so, amazing. So, yeah. So this was one of those empty frames. And so why I put one in here, this is called checkerboarding. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, as this is closer to the center of the hive, mm -hmm. the girls realize, oh, we have to draw this out so we have a place for the queen to lay. Okay. And again, it's based on if we have resources out there. So if you can see now in here, you see the larvae there inside those cells? Yes. Okay, now up here, we're gonna see just eggs. Okay. So on day four, mm -hmm. they come out as a larvae and they will double in size wow. uh, until they spin into a cocoon, they get capped and then they come out on the 21st day. So Always I, like clockwork. Oh yes. Wow. Uh, queens are 16 days. Yeah. Workers are 21 days and drones are 24 days. How often do you get a queen? Whenever they need it. Okay. Um, so, so if they don't need it, then that egg just doesn't hatch? No. So the egg will hatch, but it'll just be a worker. Okay. So what happens is based on, I don't know if I have any drone cells in here, but based on the size of the cell, mm -hmm. when the queen goes in, she puts her two front legs on it and she kind of measures it mm -hmm. and she realizes that, okay, this is a worker cell. I'm going to put a fertile egg in there. Wow. And if it's a bigger cell, it's a drone. That's an unfertile egg. Okay. So she has the ability to do that herself. Yeah, they're pretty incredible. They're very smart. Oh, yes. I'm blown away right now. I've never been this close to this many bees oh, yeah. before, and, and then you know, to see them they're doing. They're gentle. Yep. Right. Yep. They're gentle. I can say that I, you know, I'm not even going to say that out loud, but you know what I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm referring to. Yep. <laughs> and so, more than likely, we will see the queen on this frame right here. Looks like there's a whole lot of activity going on. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it's it. It's a little heavier. Yeah. So you see, there's a lot of nice. Uh, wow 
lot of night cap worker shells there. So this is all honey on there? Nope. No. This this is um, bees that are going to be emerging. Okay. Yep. A lot of activity on that one. Oh yeah. A lot more bees coming out. Yeah. Wow. There's. I mean, obviously they're bees, and we're always told growing up like don't mess with the bees because they'll sting you but they are just doing their thing they are you see the drone yeah. yeah see how big it is compared to the workers yeah and then we have what's called fuzzy bees so those are the bees that have just mm -hmm. emerged mm -hmm. um they don't necessarily have the ability to sting um early early on uh, but they're they're more of a gentle bee than the foragers okay down here if you can see the bees that are coming in, uh, some of them you'll see with the, their pollen baskets on their rear two legs, you'll see them full. Right there in the center, you see some stuff uh, on, on her back legs. They're kind of just out here. Some of them that are facing outward, they're the guard bees. They're making sure that other bees from some of the other colonies can't come in and you know everybody has a function so we we talked briefly about it but i can really see why and how this can be soothing oh, and yes. super beneficial for your hero hive program absolutely it's you, you know it's something that i'll just sit here and watch them and just by seeing what they are bringing in i know what's going on in the hive mm -hmm. But yeah, so again, it's just a means for me to potentially have a discussion with somebody that might be struggling with something that they don't necessarily want to talk about to someone other than a first responder. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you see one coming in with a little pollen there, um, some yellow pollen. Uh, the first time that I've ever seen red pollen coming in was this year. Mm -hmm. And that was in one of my hives out by Horseneck Beach. And that was um, the dead nettle that they're bringing in. And this yeah. hive here, there's probably uh, 60 to 70,000 bees in here. So I'm just gonna grab one of my So if you can look in here, I just put this on a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see, they've drawn a lot of this out and they've filled it with honey. So that's their job. You know, what they do is they'll put this up and they use this for the winter. But what we do is we come in and we, we take some of our honey mm -hmm. and we leave some for them. And so, you know, I'll come up here like this mm -hmm. and I'll put it up like this so that I can kind of see from the back. We can kind of see what's going on in here. Okay. Right, so we haven't, they haven't, well, they started drawing this one out, but this one's just foundation and these mm -hmm. two are just foundation. But you're seeing all in here, it's full of honey already. So what that does is that kind of forces them down. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. So you can see I've checkerboarded some of these because I've taken some resources off of this hive. And I don't generally like to take the first frame off. I like to start with the second frame. Mm -hmm. And so this here. Every so, time you lift it up, I'm like. <gasps> so this was a medium that I put in. Yep. Uh, I, I have plenty, fr plenty enough frames so I can change this and out. But you can see, so this is worker brood. Yeah. And these are the drones. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, they are so bigger. It, it's like a bullet shaped. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely wow. it's a little bit bigger. And the females will help the drones get out. They'll chew that out and let them come out where if it's a worker, they have mm -hmm. to do all the work themselves. Oh. Yeah. And so that that's kind of that's kind of the center of this hive. I'll pull another frame. This was a frame that I put in two weeks ago. Yep. And again, it's, I'm, I use the checkerboard method in a lot of cases because 
look, we know that, oh, they know there's no space for the queen to lay, so they draw this out a little quicker. Mm -hmm. But it takes 12 pounds of honey mm -hmm. to make one pound wax. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're eating the honey. Oh, wow. And so they put out their tongue, which is called their uh, proboscis. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me because I'm that's, just that's no smiling from ear to ear back here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brad, for giving us this tour. This has been truly incredible. My comments in the background are real. I thought this was absolutely amazing. I have never seen this many bees up close. And to see the care and delicacy that goes into getting these hives up and running is seriously incredible. Can you tell everyone where they can find your honey? Sure, you can probably go to the website, uh, www.smithmillsapiaries.com. Contact information is there. I, I have several hundred pounds of honey already from my spring batch that you know we're able to sell. I get $15 a pound and it will probably be the best honey I can guarantee that. Smith Mills Apiary by Brad Simmons. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Kristen.